Once again, I want to talk to spiritual leaders about spiritual leadership. Um, my generation of pastors and spiritual leaders learned a lot from the business world. And there was some good in that. And there was some really bad in that. Um, prior to my generation of pastors, if you went into a church building, uh, there was always a door and there was a sign on the door that said, Pastors Study. My generation, now pastors have an office. And it, and it shows the difference of thinking like a CEO, thinking like an organizational leader, rather than thinking about like someone who spends a lot of time studying scripture. Spiritual leaders need to be deeply rooted in God's word, thus pastors study. But when the organizational and the strategic and all of these concepts from the business world came in, it became not a pastor's study, but a pastor's office. Again, like I said, there was good and bad in that, a lot of bad. Uh, that's really not the deal with the modern generation of pastors, with the pastors who are a generation and two generations and three generations behind me. Uh, their model's not the business world. It's not the CEO model. It's the social media influencer model. And so rather than having that pastor study, it's now an app where we think we can get pastoral work done through cyberspace, through social media apps. And I think it is the same mistake that my generation often made of leaning too heavily into the corporate world. I think there is a new generation of pastors who lean too heavily into social media world. And in reality, there's some good and there's a lot of bad in seeing pastoral ministry, especially, or really any type of spiritual leadership, other anything other than embodied person to person, face to face. Hear me now, I'm not criticizing social media any more than I'm criticizing what my generation did, which was lean too heavily on the corporate ideas uh, versus the historic view uh, from the book of Acts up until really a generation or two ago of how we saw and how history saw pastoral leadership and spiritual leadership in general. Historically, people like us, spiritual leaders, pastors, have tried to find shortcuts uh, often to our own detriment and to the detriment of the people. But I want to look at the scripture today and I want to uh, highlight three spiritual leadership foundational principles uh, in the life and the example and the words of Jesus from this story. And so I want to look at John chapter 7, and I want to go all the way to verse 10, 1 through 10. Here we go. After this, Jesus went about in Galilee. He would not go about in Judea because the Jews were seeking to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of booth was at hand, so his brothers said to him, Leave here and go to Judea that your disciples may see the works you are doing. For no one works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed him. Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always here. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. You go up to the feast. I am not going to this feast for my time has not yet fully come. After saying this, he remained in Galilee. But after his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he also went up, not publicly, but in private. Now, again, this is a familiar story uh, to most people, most pastors and spiritual leaders, at least. And uh, there are three important foundational contrast um, options, ways to lean for pastors and spiritual leaders. Three foundational principles. The first one is uh, found in verse four, and it's when his brothers and really the footnote says, I'm in the ESV, says brothers and sisters, um, no one works in secret if he seeks to be known openly. There was an assumption, like many leaders today, that the goal is to be known publicly. The goal is to increase our influence. The goal is to increase our following. The goal is to increase our platform, that we take that as sort of an assumed good thing. 
And these brothers assumed that. They assumed that that was the point. But here's principle one, number one for spiritual leaders. It's faithfulness, not fame. We pursue faithfulness to the Lord, faithfulness to the word, not fame. Not increasing numbers, but increasing faithfulness. These people assumed he wanted to be known publicly. They assumed that he wanted to be famous. They assumed that any growth was good growth, that any increase was good increase. Jesus didn't buy into that. Jesus didn't play that game. Jesus did not uh, take the assumptions that they made and make them a part of his ministry plan. When we think about faithfulness, my mind goes to Luke 16, 10 through 12, and it defines faithfulness. If you're faithful in little, you'll be given much. If you're faithful with worldly wealth, with finances, then you'll be given true riches. If you're faithful with what belongs to another, someone else's time, someone else's money, someone else's reputation, someone else's uh, car or property, then you'll be given something of your own. We don't like that today. Faithfulness takes time. Uh, it goes from little to some to more. It goes from someone else's to ultimately your own. There's this gradual progression that happens in faithfulness, but fame can happen at once, especially now in this generation more than ever. There are people who have been crushed and destroyed by fame. Uh, there are some who make it through that, but there are usually older people who became famous accidentally and gradually. Uh, People like Tim Keller, who recently passed away, he never sought to be famous, but he became globally famous, but it was only later in life. Most of his ministry was in a small context in one city. It was a rather large church for that city, but it, the goal was to be faithful there, and eventually fame just happened. It wasn't the goal. Rick Warren, who's globally famous as a pastor and author, spent many years serving and building a church in his local community, that in time, as he was older, fame happened because of a book, and it was rather accidental. It wasn't the goal. It wasn't what was sought after. But I find many times when people, uh, whether accidentally or intentionally or purposefully or strategically, become famous, but they don't have the character, uh, they don't have the struggle that many people have had, fame will destroy people. It does it all the time. You may be familiar, probably not, with a the Van Morrison song. I know some of you don't know Van Morrison. If you don't know him, you're missing one of the greatest songwriters in the history of songwriters. But um, after almost five decades of being a um, very acclaimed singer-songwriter in his 70s, uh, he recently put out a, a song called Fame Will Eat Your Soul. This is not a Christian man or even a in any way religious man seeking after God or something, but he looked at the music industry that he's lived in and been top of the top of the totem pole here for many, many decades. And looking back, it's a it's a it's a gripping song about the dangers of fame and celebrity, what it does to deform the soul. Humans are not made to be worshipped and to be on pedestals and platforms. Uh, we're a lot healthier if we will take the approach of John the Baptist and say, I must decrease so that Jesus can increase. But I find people always doing everything they can to increase their visibility when I think sometimes that is the worst thing we can do for especially a leader's soul. So faithfulness, not fame. Let's get to the second spiritual leadership principle. We find it in verses six and eight. Uh, verse six, Jesus said to them, my time is, my time has not yet come, but your time is always here. And then he says in verse eight, you go up to the feast. I'm not going to the feast for my time has not yet fully come. And so here's principle number two, God's timing, not any time. God has times and seasons. God has times when it's ready for when, when we, his people are ready for more pressure, more, more weight to carry more spiritual burden, more spiritual fruit. There are times and when, we're, when God puts us in those situations, there are times if we put ourselves in there, then there is a collapse coming. There is a crushing coming. Abraham waited 25 years. Abraham's time was now. God's time was 25 years later. Isaac waited 20 years from the time that there was this uh, word from the Lord. For some, 20 years later, they had twins. Um, and, and, but there was this wait. Jesus 
God in human flesh to redeem the world. The time it took 30 years from the time he was born into human flesh before redemption for humanity started. So we, we see all through scripture, there's God's time and our time. And typically for humans, our time is always now or our time was yesterday. And why are we waiting so long? And often God's timing is years and decades away. God's time, not any time. And it's a leadership principle for spiritual leaders and often we want what we want. We see the vision and it's difficult for visionary people when we see what we feel like God wants to do and it's not happening yet. But what God is doing is a deepening work in our own souls and in our congregation, a deepening work. And he is forming Christ in us. And sometimes we prefer that he would perform something through us uh, right now. But for God, the forming is much more important than the performing. And the inner world is much more important than the public world and the outer world. And that brings us to this third point. We see it in verses four again, when, when, when his brothers and sisters, and then it says in verse five, they didn't believe. And I find too often we're listening to unbelievers. We're listening to non-believers. We're listening to the world whether it's my generation getting business advice and CEO advice and becoming CEOs instead of spiritual leaders, because we're listening to non-believers. And I think today so often we're listening to the world uh, and, and promotion through different platforms. And, and, and here's what it says in verse four, no one works in secret if he seeks to be known publicly. So you got to get out there and get your marketing and get your platform and get your message. But then it says this, not even his brothers believe. So these are non-believers trying to give Jesus advice. They were his brothers and sisters, yes, but they were non-believers. They didn't believe. And then in verse 10, but after his brothers had gone to the feast, he went up also not publicly, but in private. So principle number one, seek faithfulness, not fame. Principle number two, wait for God's timing, not any time. Number three, private versus public. The private life of the leader, Jesus went up in not publicly, but privately. The, the NLT says this, um, you can't become famous if you hide like this in verse four. The NIV says of verse four, no one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. You see, Jesus didn't want to become a public figure. Jesus didn't want to become famous. That was not the point, but that is often what the non-believers think the point is. So if we live like this, take advice from non-believers, what will happen is we will be confused and we'll confuse others and it won't be good for our soul. And people who think that any publicity is good publicity and always increasing the platform and that type of mentality, often we don't know the difference and, and things are done in the name of authenticity. I just need to be my authentic self and put everything out there. And we, we, we don't understand sometimes that some things are supposed to be private. They're not supposed to be public. Um, we can be authentic and not have everything out there for the whole world to see. Um, there is discretion. And I think sometimes we've lost discretion because we, we bought into that we have to be authentic. Uh, there is a place and it's usually a private place with a few people where we're totally fully authentic but that is not on social media platforms. Actually, nobody is. We curate what we want people to see of our lives that seems to be authentic. But here we go with spiritual leaders. What is the point here of this? These verses from the life of Jesus in chapter seven of John, here it is. Seek faithfulness, not fame. Wait on God's timing, not just any time, and act in private not always in public. Pay attention to your private life, your, where your soul is developed. Uh, don't pay so much attention to the public moment and the public response. So that's my thought about spiritual leaders, for spiritual leaders. I appreciate everyone who is laboring and serving, especially in those patiently waiting moments in private, waiting to see what God would do through that.